welcome to Coffee Chat with the Coffee in the Quarantine. I'm Robin Weisner, and this is my lovely friend, Lee McKenzie, AKA The Church Girl Writes. And if you are feeling isolated and anxious right now, we have got you COVID. COVID. <laughs> Uh, everybody, we're so we're so thankful for you being here this morning. Oh, got to I got to push my breakfast over. I forgot I had food right in front of me. I got my coffee. Oh, and look at I got your coffee. coffee. Yes, okay. Ooh, you can read it in the right direction too. No, yes, we love that one. Now this is just Starbucks, but I have to. I have a disclaimer. I did not go to Starbucks this morning because we're social distancing. This is probably from like four days ago, and I've used the cup at least 17 times since then. That is crazy. I Just have... for the record, you will be seeing it until it dies, until it actually starts leaking out the bottom. Hold on. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying down. to, nope. I'm going to try to watch the comments and watch on my phone at the same time. Yeah, if anyone else there also uses their Starbucks cup, you know, give me <laughs> some love. Put it, put it so, here I am down in the comments. We really appreciate that. Somebody give me some love. Tell me I'm not the only person who survived the depression. <laughs> That's oh so my God. funny. So right. what are you, are you doing anything differently now that we're, are, now are you in a mandatory quarantine right now or are you just, we are in mandatory quarantine. I think in our uh, city, we, the entire state of Illinois. So I'm coming to everybody from um, Quincy, Illinois. And thank heavens we did not get stuck in Chicago. We are going to go to Chicago. And I can't even imagine what that would have been like to be stuck in Chicago. But yeah, we the um, governor has done a mandatory shutdown of the state. We haven't closed our borders but everyone is required to uh, shelter in home at this point. There's no other, every, every non-essential business is now closed in the state of Illinois. Wow. So it's kind of a strange, strange, yeah, I have friends who own companies here. Um, and I'm so thankful that like our um, steel company that's here didn't get shut down. I know that um, my girlfriend, Laura, was really concerned about that and concerned about her people. We can still go to restaurants and stuff like that to um, like uh, curbside, but mm -hmm. that's, that's it. Go to groceries. You can still walk around outside, but they're strongly encouraging social distancing still. How about you? Um, we are not in we, we are not in that mandatory state right now, but I just I'm in Virginia. Um, we just heard last night Delaware is in a mandatory same as you um, until May 15th. Mm. So, I mean, I don't know if it's going to I imagine. If people don't stay home, they're going to have to do that. So we are voluntarily doing all of those things. We're only going out to get food um, and anything that we need around the house. But other than that, in a way, this has been my life for a long time anyway, because I work from home and we homeschooled, you know, and I got this shirt, Faith Over Fear. I've had yeah. this for like, I mean, this is the moment I've been waiting for, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I've been training for this. <laughs> Yeah, we've been praying for this. No, we haven't been praying for this. We've been, we've been training been for it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I, I actually hadn't left the house for mm, probably about ten days, and I went to the store this weekend with Phil. I mean, I just didn't really need to, and he's the kind of guy he likes to be out in the mix and all that, and 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 foraging for food. And it was so weird to see people with the mask on and the gloves at the grocery store, but at the same time, I don't get it because. They're touching everything with their gloves. Then they're touching their face, and they're op it's still on the gloves. So it's it's kind of a mess, isn't it? Like when yeah. you start really thinking about disease transmission and how it goes from one place to another. Like you have to be so so careful. I remember in college, I um I had my microbiology class, and I I was like, oh my gosh, like you can't do anything, and I stopped doing all these things, and then eventually I'm like, well, I can't do anything, so I may as well do everything. Yeah. <laughs> You start, like, did you start licking doorknobs? <laughs> yeah, totally. I'm like, okay, just stop. Stop the crazy. Because you could really go crazy in it. But yeah, it was such a strange time, isn't it? I, I've gone out. So I've been ordering online um, Walmart around our, our place. You can order online. They pick all your food for you and you just go pick it up. And mm -hmm. that's been my saving grace. I don't know if that's been something that you've been doing as well. Um, I have no, we've been actually going into the store. Um People don't seem to really be practicing social distancing in the store, um, but the I know my mom. My mom. My mom is in the risk zone, um, and she lives by herself. She's about thirty minutes from here, and there's a Walmart literally 
a, a quarter of a mile from her house. It's right on the corner. And she said they stopped doing the, um, the pickups. So I don't know what that's about. And then and originally she had tried to schedule it and she had to wait seven days. She couldn't get an appointment for seven days. And then she said they, they stopped doing that. I'm not sure why, maybe it was just so overwhelming and they needed all the people to stock the shelves. So then I encouraged her to try Instacart. And um, so Instacart would pick up from another grocery store nearby. That's a three day wait right now. So oh, wow. yeah, and it's, Great. it's really, yeah. It's a freak out. <laughs> it is. And I think that, you know, in through this whole show that what we really wanted to talk about was, you know, if you're feeling real isolated out there or if you're feeling like, gosh, this is just you just want to have somebody to come on and chat with yeah. and have back and forth conversation with. We'd love to see that down in the comments. You know, I'd love to know who's here right now. I'm yeah. Trying to find it. Do you see? Do, are you able to see? No, it? I'm and, and let me. So just excuse us, guys, because we haven't tried to um, do this before. But let me see if I can switch over to my Facebook and just see if um, if I can read any comments. But if you're watching, whether you're watching live or the recording, we would love for you to drop down below uh, where you're from and whether you're on a mandatory or voluntary, um, what do they call it, quarantine right now. Right. Right. And I see us. Okay. Uh, hopefully this audio won't make a mess. <laughs> Let's see. Um, do, 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 do. I have to, I'm going to, it's going to start playing. I'm pretty sure. So hold on guys. <clears throat> yeah. So a lot of what we want to do in this is, you know, we're, 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 we've both been working from home for a long time and, <clears throat> you know, I know that as a writer, I'm used to, I am, I was bred for <laughs> social isolation and, uh, and quarantine. I'm cool with it. But I did know that like probably about five or six months ago, maybe seven months ago, um, Robin and I have been going back and forth on Instagram for a real long time. She's a huge influencer over there. And I just fell in love with her, thought she was fabulous. And she and I just started praying back and forth, talking back and forth. And we finally realized that we just need to have a coffee date. Like, yeah, I just wanted to have coffee with you, Robin, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I thought that you were fabulous. And I really wanted to see what you were like, you know, in, in live version versus just on a platform. And what's great is that I found that you're exactly who I thought you were, um, no matter on the, on the, on the network. So we started having these coffee dates and when the quarantine hit, Robin had a great idea to really consider doing coffee dates together on online and doing it live and maybe to make everybody else not feel quite so lonely. And so the Facebook app, you know, and some special software later, uh, we really want to try and be value added in this. And so we're going to be covering about five or six different, different F words if you will, <laughs> um, hopefully every week. And Robin, you want to tell them about that? Yeah, sure. And uh, but first, I just want to say how much I just love and appreciate you. I, I'm not even sure how we connected. But I just instantly just loved your spirit. I love you are um, a truth sayer and a, a fear slayer. And boy, I sure just um, cherish that in my life so much. And um, I just I just love to pray with you. Uh, you know, I really felt drawn to connect with you in that way. And it's so amazing because we've never actually met face to face. And um, we have had the most uh, authentic and real conversations ever, um, you know, through technology. So we're so grateful for that. And, and like you said, uh, for those that are watching, we want to share that with you because it is possible we can connect in this way, you know, and we want to be able to, pr to partner with you and pray with you and, uh, and and have coffee. So um, I always have coffee. Yeah, and I know my friend Loretta's on, and she can't stay long. But Loretta, yeah. I love you. Come back and watch us um, after you're after you are done doing the amazing things. For that you sure. Do. <laughs> Let me but. see. Oh, okay. So I now I can see the comments. All right, I'll have to switch back and forth. Awesome. We're doing it. Yeah. We're doing it. We're figuring it out. Yes, we can. You know, this is an interesting fact. Before I get into our five Fs. Is that um, what are we? We're Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Which X, Gen X. Gen X. I'm actually on the cusp, but of of uh, baby boomers. <laughs> but um, we are the only generation who knows technology, and we know how to live without it because we grew up without it, 
And then we were there at the inception of all of this kind of stuff. And so we can live in both worlds. I think that's pretty cool. I, mean, <laughs> I, think, that we're, I think that we are like the, uh, we're the glue that holds it all together. Exactly. The, exactly. Like the foundation and we, we were the ones who figured out, oh, how can you use this stuff? And then the millennials and the, and the Gen Wires came along and they're like, hey, this is awesome. This is wonderful. And we're like, yeah, we yeah. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of funny because they say during this time, make sure you FaceTime the elderly. Well, I mean, <laughs> for some, it might be a little hard to figure that out. That's going to be hard if we haven't done I mean, it before now, friends. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but um, when we come to you on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 11 a.m. Eastern, or is it 10 a.m. Central? Central? Nine Mountain Pacific. I yeah. finally figured it out. Yes. We, uh, we, we want to talk about family a little bit, like what's happening in your family dynamics right now. How are you dealing with the, uh, I keep wanting to say shut in. It's not a shut in, self-quarantined, I guess. Um, uh, what are, what funny thing has happened because humor is so important. That's why I married my husband. He makes me laugh so much. <laughs> Humor, uh, funny things. What's your new favorite thing? Because now we're just got our life is just our routines are totally changed. So what is something that's a new favorite of yours? Maybe a favorite product, a favorite hobby or a habit or thing that's, you know, tradition that you're developing in your family. What are you freaking out about? What kind of things are making you feel fearful right now because let's talk about it and let's let's recognize that you're not alone in that and then also talking about faith you know we want to we want to partner with you and pray with you and so we invite you to you know comment comment and engage here this is not this is for you to come and sit at the table with us so we want you to be part of the conversation so like i said tell us where you're from and uh, what's your current status and then you know Please engage as we're going through talking about family. Um, like, what did you do with your family this weekend? Anything different or? Well, Robin, I think uh, we, we're just being a lot more intentional right now uh, because you, it feels like we're supposed to be more intentional. Mm -hmm. And I think it's been interesting that how busy we've been in the past every single weekend. We have a I have kids who do music and, and drama and things like that. So we've had, you know, all these performances, especially in the springtime. And we've had like, you know, school and busy this and busy that. And we have been, I think what I'm going to call a mandatory Sabbath. We've been under a mandatory mm. Sabbath. I wonder if the Lord is like, y'all, y'all too busy. Like you got too much stuff going on. You're traveling this, you're traveling that. And all these things that you've been so busy with. And mm -hmm. I think he wants us to be busy about the things about our homes right now for some reason. So yeah. we've just kind of been, we've been making, we've been cooking a lot together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we've been doing that. I think probably you and Billy and, and, and Phil have probably done that a lot too around your home. Have you been doing that? Um, actually, we haven't been cooking that much. Um, Billy's done some, but he, he is in the restaurant industry. He's a chef. So he's not working right now, which is sad. And, uh, but he is on a different sleep schedule because, you know, they work usually nights. So he usually um, sleeps until about one o'clock and then he stays up until late. So we see each other in that little, you know, like yeah. between one and eight <laughs> Phil and I go to bed, or oh nine, whatever we go to bed. So, you know, we're not having, we don't have breakfast at the same time, um, but we usually have like a late lunch, early dinner together. And then we're just kind of, you know, munching a little bit, honestly. Um, so yeah, but we, this weekend, um, we finished getting the yard cleaned up for the spring because um, Billy can't wait. To, well, and Phil too. We have a really nice grill. It's like a, uh, it has like a smoker and you could put hickory stuff in there. And because it was just the two of us last year, we never even used it. And Billy keeps saying, let me at that thing. So um, we cleaned all our patio up and he got the grill already. And so we did a bunch of meal prep. Mm -hmm. um, so we got some chicken and steak and we grilled some veggies on there. So we're kind of, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we keep it really simple though, but, um, but it was fun. So in that way, when, with meal prepping, then we can all just take what we want when we're, we're hungry and make a meal that way. And then, um, I wanted to set up a bookshelf to like, you know, we're trying to store up on some canned foods and things like that. And, um, the, you know, you have those spaces in your house that 
when you walk in, you're like, Ugh, you get that feeling, but you never actually do anything about it. And I really just, this bookshelf is right in front of the car when we pull into the garage. And it was kind of like, Ugh, all right, I'm just going to, I told Phil, I'm just doing this bookshelf. But of course, I ended up, you know, did the whole garage, but it feels so nice now. Now we have this clean space. So it was productive. And then I spent a lot of time um, studying and reading. There's so many books. I, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm an ADD reader. I have like a stack like this and, and I love learning. So uh, it was nice to just slow down and do some of that. That's good. I, you know, I actually finished a book I started two years ago. The boys decided to watch 16 Candles. They're, they're going through all the John Hughes. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how you feel about them, but I'm like, oh, those are so 80s. And so they were doing 16 Candles. And I'm like, I can't, I can't watch this again. So I finally finished a book that I had started probably two years ago, two years ago called The Snow, uh, The Snow Gypsy. And it has been so cool just to go, oh my gosh, that was a great book. Why didn't I finish it? But I finally had time to actually, actually do something like sit down and read. And I've, I've really enjoyed that and loved having that opportunity. And you know, we also went to, um, we also went on a long walk together, the dogs, the kids and everybody. Mm. And that's been super fun. I've loved, I've just loved having this time together where you have to be, again, you have to be so intentional about our time. And uh, man, that's felt really good. I, and I just love, I love these humans that I'm in this house with. Yeah, I think it'd be really hard if I didn't love my husband or if I didn't like my kids. But <laughs> I, 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 they're my favorite people in the whole wide world. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we're we're not perfect, but we're just we're just us. And uh, gosh, I just I've loved it. I love doing that. Yeah, we had we had a double header movie night. That was kind of fun too. So it was very what? rare that we could get. Oh, uh, you probably don't want to know. They were like, <laughs> um, John Hughes um, movies. <laughs> what's that? John Hughes movies. No, um, we watched Jojo Rabbit. Um, so my son Billy, he he likes. Um, uh, I don't know how you explain it, but different kinds of movies that are more artistic. He's really about the cinematography and just like uh, you know just unique in the storyline. So we watched Jojo Rabbit, which was very interesting. Um, Scarlett Johansson was amazing. It was a really great performance. It was like a, I don't know what you would call it, like a, a dark comedy. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to take place during World War II. And this little boy is, he's, and he, uh, Hitler is his imaginary friend and he yeah, wants to be a Nazi. Wasn't it yeah. nominated for uh, an Oscar? I think so. Yeah, um, so so that was one movie that afterwards we kept thinking about it a lot. Um, Scarlett Johansson was really good. The other one was Uncut Gems with um, Adam Sandler, which was a completely different role for him. And I, 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 we all felt assaulted. Like we should have probably just turned it off. Seriously, it was, <laughs> there was no break in the whole movie. All of us, and when it was over, we were like, what did we, I, I, we got to watch cartoons or something before we go to bed. It was just not, it was just like watching someone you love who has an addiction or whatever. He had a gambling addiction and he just kept robbing Peter to pay Paul and just kept getting in more trouble. And it was, you know, it was just so intense. Um, so it was for him. Wow. I mean, completely different from Waterboy. <laughs> oh it was a great performance, but not a good relaxing movie at all. So I finally I finally watched Frozen 2 last night. No one else had watched it with me. I'm like, fine, I'm watching it by myself. I'll watch it with you. We need to do a watch party or something. <laughs> oh, so good, Robin. Oh, it's it's all about the sisterhood and I love the sisterhood. Uh that just got me right in the feels and I was crying and my husband <laughs> My husband, I'm going to Frozen too. And my <laughs> husband came over. He's like, you're going to be okay, babe. I'm like, this is so beautiful. This is love it. It's good. <laughs> he's like, oh, okay. I'm going to here with you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's all good. And the, and the music was gorgeous. And the visuals were pretty. And, of course, I liked the clothes. I'm like, girlfriend. And 
I just got it going on. Like I love the outfits. So there's there's yeah. all that going on. <laughs> <laughs> and I see Katie, you were watching uh Emma. I want to watch that too. And no one's gonna watch that with me at home, unfortunately. Who will or won't? No one no, no one's gonna watch that with me. No. no one's gonna watch that with me. <laughs> it's either action, it's all action or sci-fi around here. That's either that's the one you watch on your phone, you know, like my oh, husband yeah. is like, a, he likes rom-coms. Mm -hmm. I hate rom-coms, but I love period films. And so it's like, I can't, I can't watch your romantic com com comedies. He loves like a million little things and a, this one, this is that, this is us. He likes all of those. And I'm like, oh, I, yeah. there's too much drama in that. I can't do the drama. <laughs> so. I, I started watching This Is Us, but I cry too much. So, oh, so yeah. So if you're watching again, whether live or, you know, the recording, let us know your movie recommendations below. We would love to hear. Um, I know I'm sure that the Disney plus subscriptions went way up. Yeah. Um, we don't, we don't have Netflix anymore. Cause we just didn't, I don't really watch TV that much. Um, but I'm considering it now we use, we have Amazon prime. Um, so there's some good movies on that. And then we have pay-per-view on our cable. Um, but yeah, we'd love to hear your movie recommendations. Hmm? You still have cable. I do. Is that crazy? Wow. Because we don't have cable. We went completely away from cable and we instead do Amazon plus, I'm sorry, Amazon prime. Uh, we do some Hulu maybe. I, and again, I don't watch TV either. So yeah, <laughs> a little thing. we have like YouTube TV and then we just got Disney plus. Yeah. And we have Netflix. But, oh my gosh, Disney Plus. Whoa. Why didn't anyone tell me? Everybody told me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my kids are telling me, you need to get Disney Plus. They're watching all their childhood favorites. Yeah, it is. So, it is so much fun. And I think when you become when you become a grandma, you're going to be like, we definitely got to get Disney Plus because, yo, yo, we got some good shows. Like, we, the kids scrolled through. We just bought it for them. Us, me yesterday and mm -hmm. uh, we were scrolling through and seeing all the different shows that they have but oh my gosh uh the kids were like oh they have that one oh i love that show and of course my 17 year old son wants it for the simpsons and i'm like no <laughs> no like, that's that's so below but it's actually kind of funny so i gotta say there we go <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, uh, my husband likes to watch, um, like history channel and war channel, that kind of stuff. So if we had talked about it, we just never acted on it. Cause we have a fire stick too. You can get a lot of things on there too. And he likes to be able to watch his, um, the, the his Buffalo bills play. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know. We've just never changed it. I get you. I get you. Yeah. Well, so what funny, sorry, go ahead. Nope. You, you, what funny thing happened to you this week? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of something actually kind of funny, except I think the only thing that was really funny was Bella catching a tea towel on fire when we were making pretzels. The other yeah, day. yeah. <laughs> that was like pretty funny um, because she's, I have a 12 year old and she loves to be in the kitchen. She's just, I mean, she's really quite a brilliant young cook. She likes to bake. She likes to cook. She likes to do all sorts of different things. And when she gets an idea, like she's so courageous. I would never, I would never be as courageous as my own daughter. She had an idea this week that she wanted to do uh, pretzels or last week. And I'm like, pretzels? I, I, I don't even understand. Like, go, you go to the store and buy pretzels, right? And she's like, no, mom, no, we got to do the pretzels. And so I'm like, go at it. I, I'm, I'm out because I get too stressed out because it seems too complicated. Well, she's boiling, like she's rolled them out and she has this huge cauldron on and she's <laughs> boiling the water with baking soda. And I guess she left the tea towel too close to the fire. And I'm smelling like I'm not, I'm partly in the room, but I'm far, like I'm back there and the kitchen's over here. And I'm like, something's burning. <laughs> Were we on the were we on video call then too? I think because we I heard you go fire, fire, fire. I mean, and it was like a flame this big. 
They're like, bow, 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 bow. and of course she's got, you know, 12 year old, she's got her AirPods in <laughs> watching a show while she's doing everything else. Cause of course they multitask in a thousand different ways. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't know. She's like, I was not. I was just working on the other part. Anyway, I'm like, we have a fire. <laughs> so I had to scoop that up. And I mean, it was, it burned the whole towel. I, it was oh done. My gosh. I was like, oh. So we just threw that in the, in the sink. And that was our excitement. <laughs> what kind of fun things you have? Well, it's, it's funny because, um, you know, our church, we're moving our connect groups and everything online. Mm -hmm. And so we had this meeting and they were talking about different ways you could do that. And I didn't know you could do up to 50 people on Facebook Messenger video call. Whoa. Yeah. So I said, OK, so after we got off that meeting call, I said, all right, you guys, let's let's try this. So the three of us are in different parts of the house. And um, so we were doing this video call and then we discovered that there are filters you can put on there. And so this is this is our family picture. Can you see? <laughs> we are all feet. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awesome! We were oh laughing gosh. so hard. Oh my gosh, that was so funny. I'm impressed. Yeah, you can send that out next year for Christmas. I know. <laughs> this is what we did in the quarantine. Well, it's even funnier because Phil has like a foot thing. Whenever we're driving, he always notices people with their feet on the dashboard. He's always like, feet. <laughs> <laughs> Who puts, do you put your feet on the dashboard? Not particularly. No, my yeah. feet tend to go on the floor. Yeah. My mom used to say that's like a hillbilly thing. You put your feet <laughs> up the window. You're like a hillbilly. Don't well, we're in the south, so we, I guess we got more. <laughs> <laughs> you, may have, you may have a couple more. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, gosh. So do you have any new favorites or recommendations or anything that's a new favorite thing for you now? Okay. So I've been thinking hard about this because I think every day, Robin, we need to come up with every day when we're on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 11, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central. Every day, I think we've got to come up with some sort of favorite something like it's a helpful tip or it's a helpful something that mm -hmm. will make us like, okay, this is the favorite thing right now. All right. In light of the fact that we are in, I'm trying to troubleshoot this whole toilet paper thing. It's really actually got me anxious <laughs> for some reason. I'm, and I'm like, why is everybody doing this? And we've been like, every single news agency and every person from the government has said, stop stockpiling the toilet paper. What's your problem? People stop it with the toilet paper. And so I started really thinking, you know, as a, as a person like me, I'm always like, okay, what's the next step? How do we problem solve this? We got to figure it out, right? Well, what I realized, okay, this might be too much information. Are we going to be okay with a little too much information? Yeah. All right. So here's the thing. I, I love your question. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was typing. I was like, which coffee right now? Toilet paper may trump the coffee, but. Okay. Do you remember when you were, when you were, when you had a baby? Yes. All right. Did they ever give you one of these? No. Cause I had C-section. I had a C-section too, but they still gave me one of these. <laughs> because what happens after you have the baby, you still have all that other stuff. Oh, you're going to make your own bidet. I Bella, as soon as this whole thing started, she's like, we need to install the bidet. And I'm like, okay, that's great. But until we can get the bidet, because we've been to Europe. I love bidets. I think bidets should be in every home in the world, personally. But until we can actually get the bidet, how about we do a $2.50 spray bottle, okay? With the, it has like the, has like four little holes on the top of it, warm water, and you just do, 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 do. And then you have your own like little, like, you know, paper towel, or you have your own like washcloth and it's yours. You can't yeah. share the washcloth. Right. And so I, um, I have my, in case we run out of toilet paper, <laughs> I, I've got my, my little wash spray bottle and I will have my own hand towel and don't forget what side you did what on, but that is my <laughs> new favorite thing and idea. So if, if this all goes bust after anything, People will now know what to do if they run out of toilet paper. Seriously, that is, you are so brilliant. That seems like a good business. Sorry, kids. 
<laughs> well, you could if you have any kind of like spray bottle, you know. I mean, bottle. I mean, you can make it a well. That would be weird, but I mean, <laughs> like you can make it a game, but that would be weird. Have somebody else in the bathroom with you. I mean, that would be really weird. Honey, hold. On. I mean, no, that's no, that would be wrong. <laughs> but I'm just saying, there are options, people. There are options. Yeah, you run that's out of right. Paper. That's right. You're right. That is hysterical. I want to hear from everybody that's watching. Would you rather have a lifetime supply of toilet paper or coffee or toilet paper or chocolate? <laughs> Katie's Wait, that, that Pepsi, I see. That's good. <laughs> Katie and says crochet. Robin, I see someone can crochet and she has a huge supply of yarn. Yay. Oh my gosh. You know what? I actually, when uh, we were, we, we cleaned out um, our basement area. We have a finished basement, but we have a, like there's one section that could be a bedroom and we were using that closet for storage. I cleaned it out. I found two big bags of yarn. Like I thought I had already cleared out my yarn. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Phil's over here like, what? Do you know how to crochet in this? Oh yeah, I know how to crochet. Oh yeah, I'm a fiend. I have actually have, I, I probably have like, <laughs> I probably have 30 pounds of yarn. <laughs> Serious. So what yeah. we can do is a giveaway. <laughs> You're gonna crochet or knit some little hand thingies and I'm send the plastic bottles. It's <laughs> a great business idea. <laughs> Check out for your business. Model. They're making fun of my. They're making fun of my yarn. Seriously, you could make a lot of them. I'm, you, I'm, um, I'm I'm asking the question: Would you use a, a spray bottle? <laughs> Yes. What are they? What are you guys saying? Katie's laughing. <laughs> Stash. I know it's so. I, you know what? I'm kind of like. I mean, everybody has stuff they collect, right? I mean, for me, it, it used to be yarn, really bad, and um, and now it's it's always been books for sure. Books. I have such a big stack, um, and I can I can say that's one of my favorite things right now is I'm um, actually finishing up a book called Women of Excellence. I can't remember. I think it's Catherine Holden. I'm not sure who the author is. I can show you guys. But it's so good. Um, it's really easy, and it's it's just talking about, you know, well, not just Proverbs 31 woman, but just talking about um, having a, um, a quiet spirit, you know, how we can, like right now, really related, well, it relates, it's timeless, but to especially this period, how we can carry ourselves in our family because um, our demeanor and how we conduct ourselves, it sends out ripple effects to the whole family. So just having that quiet, calm spirit, being centered, not being freaked out all the time, um, which is hard, you know, especially like for us, we're on social media and we want to be that voice, but deep down we're freaking out too. <laughs> deep down we're like, I need, I need to get that water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you one, sweetie. I'll send it via Amazon as soon as I can. <laughs> yeah, but it's you know it's it, um so I'm really really loving that and um if anybody's interested um if you go on Instagram there is a page called the Bible Babes the Bible Babes and it's Mindy Lahorn and um she's actually a, a Beachbody coach but this is her own thing and uh, she just started a new study today it's called the other F word so we're talking about the F words, it's, it's, it's fear. Mm. <clears throat> and um, so anyway, I'm just really enjoying having more time, uh, really leaning into the word. That's one of my favorites now. So that's been, I think that's one of the things that we can really depend on in this, especially where we are. And again, that we talked about before about the mandatory Sabbath and the idea yeah. that we've been so busy and had so many things capturing our, our tensions left and right. And I wonder if this is just God going, Hey, I just, can you just focus on me for a second? Like I'm giving you yeah. plenty of space and plenty of time. I know that our online, our, uh, the crossing, the church I'm a part of our online was, um, I think we had 10,000 people online Oh my gosh! between our app and Facebook lives. And I mean, people are turning back to God because they don't understand. They don't, we don't know, we don't have answers. And, and guess what? We may never have answers, but mm -hmm. we know the one who does. And mm -hmm. you know, in my times of freak out, like, um, you know, I think our, our, I'm going to combine my faith and my freak out because it just makes sense to, but 
I feel like this last week I I was fine for the first four or five days, and then I got a little I got a little weepy on Friday and Saturday. Mm. I don't know if that happened to anybody else. So if you guys got if you got a little weepy, you can put a little tear tear person in the comments. But I, I tell you, it was like this isn't how I thought life was going to be right now. Mm -hmm. And I have a senior who's supposed to be graduating in May and they're not going to even walk. And these are the kids that there's 3 million of them that were born in 9-11 mm. and they're graduating with COVID-19. And it's just like, this isn't how I wanted prom to be. Mm -hmm. for this isn't how I mm -hmm. want, I don't, I didn't want my, my daughter to grow up in this kind of environment. And I got really, really, really sad and weepy. And I had to go back to the word. And that's the only thing that's gonna sustain me. And really the word was telling me, I got this. Mm -hmm. I got this. In the persecution and acts, I got this. It looks really, really bad, doesn't it kids? I got this. And Jeremiah, you know, the weeping prophet looking around, I got this in Daniel four and he's crying and begging. He's, he's up in his room and he is praying on his knees, repenting for the, his entire nation and for himself. God's got this. He's got this. Mm -hmm. and I really feel like that's the only place I can go right now to shelter the most high. Mm -hmm. I stay under his and he just stay under the, the umbrella of that. Because otherwise, I think I, I I don't know how I would be. I think I just I'd be I'd give up maybe, or I'd be downhearted, or I'd be angry all the time. And I I don't want to be bitter, and I don't want to be angry. I just want to I want to shine encouragement and Christ wherever I go. Mm -hmm. That's so sorry. good. No, that was so good, so good. And you know what? I can see the comments in our little be live here now, so that's good too. <laughs> Yeah. So Katie was agreeing with us. Yeah. Um, so true. And um, I chose to unplug this weekend because um, not because I'm not, I, I'm not afraid that we won't get through this and I'm not afraid that we're going to die from this, you know, and that let's just be real. Some, you know, it's, we can be concerned about that, right? Will I catch this and will I die? Right. Right. Katie, we could be focused on the fear. Um, and um, so anyway, but my, my issue is I continue to scroll and scroll and scroll. And I think we talked about this last week. I don't even, I'm not really even absorbing anything. I'm just, I can't stop. I can't stop scrolling. So I was like, I, I just have to get off for the weekend. Um, I keep my, my feed very clean. I don't have any politics. I don't allow people to, I don't have any people like that that I'm around. So I just couldn't stop myself. And it was so good but to just like, I was kind of proud of myself to put my phone away, like go work in the garage. I, I don't know if anybody's even trying to reach me right now, you know, watch a movie and keep my phone, you know, away from me. Um, but I did get into, like I said, into the word and um, we did our church online too, which they did such a great, great job. I was so proud of them. So proud of them. Um, and, but then I watched a John Maxwell um, live stream and I'm just, it's like we went through this period of like, people were like, this is a joke. And then some people were like, no, it's not a joke. And then last week it's like, oh my gosh, this is like for real, you know? Yeah. And, and so I feel like this is our opportunity to now we've got to really find our new normal. Like Katie was saying, maybe we need to be blocking our time and making time for that priority. We need to, you know, uh, we need to have a, a separation between one day to the next day so that we're not, you know, like you were talking about having a baby, you know, that feeling when you just had a baby, you don't know what day it is. Mm -hmm. Your brain turns to mush. You're wearing the same sweats all week. We can't let that happen to us. Um, so anyway, I was listening to this John Maxwell live stream. He's actually doing it every, he's doing it um, today, tomorrow and Wednesday, I think at 12 on his um, page, his Facebook page. But he was talking about all the different crises that we've gone through 
And God's gotten us through every single one of them. You know, I mean, he's, he was talking about, remember Y2K, people were stocking up on food. We thought the world was going to end on Y2K. And there was the swine flu and the bird flu and SARS and 9-11. And I mean, just so many different things. And at that, you know, there was, he was talking about the Aztec calendar. Remember people thought the world was going to end whenever that was. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> you know, there were so many different, we've had so many of these and, and when we will get through this and it won't be, we won't have the same normal on the other end of it. Right. It, because things will have changed. All of these, all of us that are learning how to do things, um, you know, through, uh, what's the, what am I talking about? Not telepathically <laughs> with technology and technology. Yeah. Yeah, it will change. And you and you see all this innovation coming up now. It's, it's going to be different on the other side. So we can choose to like hide in our houses and be afraid or we can choose to use this time to really, you know, um, search within work on, uh, you know, on those place asking God to search our hearts and show us what we need to be working on right now mending those relationships, you know, and just be prepared for when we come out of this because we will come out of this. I, it may, you know, we don't know when, but it could be three months, could be six months, but it will be okay. We'll be okay. That's such a great teaching to Robin, just to think about, you know, on the other side and what, what new kind of innovations are there going to be, you know, in my church, I'm just looking, we're a mega site, multi-site mega church in the Midwest. So we're not in any major, uh, major cities or anything like that. We're just in all these little towns all around, all around. But we have like anywhere between 10 and 13,000 people at any of our physical locations every every week. And this is really pushing the limit. How how what does church look like? We've had conversations for years. Is online church real church? And people are like, no, it's not real church. You have to be in a physical building. You have to be da 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 da. And we're finding now that online church has been. That, that is a huge church. And what's been even more interesting is that it has been like we're able to see the chat. So normally mm -hmm. when I'm sitting in a, in, a, in a room with everybody, I can't hear what anyone's thinking. But now I'm like, I can see what people are thinking about this, about the sermon. Like they really, really like this or they love the worship or I didn't know that they felt that way about this. And it's been really, really, I feel like it's almost become more intimate now that yes. we've had to try to do church online and figure out what does that look like, maintain the excellence, you know, because we're serving the Lord, not man. But at the same time, how will we continue to innovate in ministry um, to reach the lost, to care for the sick, to love on those who are marginalized and to build up in fellowship the body of faith? It's just so, so exciting, so exciting to see in how are we, you know, I'm thinking like the online homeschooling moms now, everybody in my state is now homeschooling until at least April 8th. What's that going to look like? How is that going to change how we interact with our children? Mm -hmm. How does it change how school is run? I mean, this is a, this is the greatest opportunity. I feel like even amidst, amidst the sadness and the challenges and the fear, but this mm -hmm. is a great opportunity for, for us to really figure out what is the best way? How, how can we innovate to make things better? We've gone doing things unquestioned, like school and church and life for so long. What's going to happen Like when we end up go, at the end of this going, wow, we made this so much better than it was before? Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah. It's true. I'm, and I'm like you, I go through these waves where I'm really excited because I'm seeing these new things like the way that, that our church, our church is not a mega church <laughs> yet, <laughs> but the way that it we rallied together to continue our small groups and to even make them even make, keep us more connected and suggestions as group leaders, how to, you know, just stay in touch with everyone. So like you said, in a way it does create even more intimate relationships, but then, and then there's moments where, you're just like, you know, you just feel this wave of fear will hit you, you know? So it's not like it's smooth sailing all the time. You're just, we're just kind of riding it. And I think, you know, really limiting how much we're looking at the news is, is going to help a lot. I mean, I feel like at this point, for me anyway, because I've been monitoring it for, I don't know, 
however long, a month or so, I feel like, okay, there's not much new they're going to tell us other than like cure rates, death rates, whatever. Like, I mean, we're, if you're not in a mandatory um, quarantine right now, most likely we all will be at some point. We haven't reached the peak yet. It's probably going to be two more weeks before we hit the peak. And this, you know, I mean, let's, for me, when I deal with fear, I have to like play this thing out to the end. Like what's the worst case scenario? What's likely going to happen? And to me, that's the way I look at it. We haven't hit the peak. We'll hit the peak. They're going to have to tell us to stay home longer and we're just going to have to do it and things will work out. And then on the other side, we'll all everybody will come out. It'll be summertime. <laughs> we'll start rebuilding and this will be behind us, you know? Um, so I don't know. That's just kind of how, how I look at it. So I'd love to hear, I'd love to hear, you know, hopefully people will put in the chat, like what, what, what are the new innovations? Um, yeah. What new innovation do you see that could be on the horizon? I mean, I think there are brand new markets. Honestly, I, my husband's a financial planner. So I think about what, what would be an emerging market right now that, um, that would, that would be serving that could serve us or that maybe there's something you know, growing inside of you, somebody who's watching this right now, right? And is there something that you have to offer out there that will be, that will be, you're the linchpin in mm -hmm. something that could change how we do business, change how we do life. And I, I, that just gets me excited to think that everyday people now, you don't have to be the CEO of a major company. You could be mom, stay at home mom. You could be, you know, mom who works part time mom, but you may have something, you know, that could change everything. And I think it's so important to share those kinds of things, you know, or at least put it out in the roundhouse with a bunch of other women and say, what do you think about this idea? Um, and go with it. And I think mm -hmm. about you asking last week, hey, do you want to go? Do you want to do this? Lead? Do, would you want to do a live with me? I'm like, I do anything you wanted to do, Robin. I love you. <laughs> you know, you're like, yeah, I, I would I would encourage. Why wouldn't you try it? Especially right now. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you put your ideas out there? Why wouldn't you learn a new technology so that you could share whatever it is with the people that are around you or that it could actually go around the world? You know, if you've always wanted to be a blogger or a vlogger or whatever, maybe this is the time. Figure out how to do it. Ask questions of other people who already do it. Because what I'm finding um, as, a, as a blogger, I mean, my posts are going around the world. And I'm surprised. I mean, China. China is reading the church girl rights. And I'm like, why are you reading me? <laughs> Aren't I illegal in your, in your country? <laughs> this seems a little strange, doesn't it? But somehow I'm getting in. And so you may be able to reach people that you never thought you could reach before just by. Yeah. 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 My husband was just, uh, he was just telling me this morning, you know, it was, uh, I think he said five years ago, right around now, five years ago that he went on Facebook live and announced that he was going to start this health journey. He was like five months behind me, but he had gone on live. He said, I want to hold myself accountable that I'm going to you know, be taking this step. I'm going to get healthy and all this. And so he was like, you know, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to go online. He's because he's, in, he's fortunate. He's already been working from home. He works for a great company. Um, and, but he can relate to people who've been working in the office who are now suddenly at home. And we were talking like some of them maybe were using their office gym or whatever, and now they don't. And so he was like, I think I'm just going to go live once a week and ask people, how are you, what are you doing to like stay healthy while you're working from home? Because for anybody who has transitioned to that, um, it's so easy to work nonstop and not take a break. Right. Oh, yeah. So we, we need accountability and support in that. Like, you have to have that balance. Can you, you know, I can imagine plenty of people out there, dads and moms that now they're working from home and how do you balance that? Cause you've, now you've got kids screaming, running around you or just noise. You don't have, you know, you're not in your usual work zone and that's hard. And, and you might, or you might even feel like, ne you know, you're neg neglecting your family cause you just like, I got to get this done. So, I mean, there's all sorts of ways we all have special experience and gifts and talents that we could be sharing. Um, and nothing is too small or insignificant. Throw it out there. Like you said, throw it out there. It's going to help somebody, yeah. even if it's just one person. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's so, and that's so key because we, everything is, again, everything's up in the air for us right now. Mm -hmm. We have at this moment in time, the opportunity to 
change the way we do everything and make it better. Yeah. And that's just, yeah. that, that, that makes me go, Ooh, yes. Like if I've always wanted to learn something, it's, you got time. And I love, mm -hmm. I really love that idea that was written about in the, in the chat, the, the time blocking yeah. I, like, or even like time splits, you know, that I would have like a time split of, okay, I need this time with my kids, but then I really, I have like four deadlines right now. I have not written things I'm supposed to be writing and I'm on a deadline. I really need to take care of business there. Oh my gosh, my dog's going to start barking. At me. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> not in the studios today. <laughs> So if you have a dog barking, I'll need to try and figure out. How to like. But yeah, just th those ideas, you know, and, and just to see how far Phil has come. Mm -hmm. I mean, unbelievable that in five years you look and see where he is now. And that is just astounding to me. Yeah. But like, well, Katie's, Katie's one of my lighter way ladies. And uh, so, yeah, that's the time blocking that I teach in my program. And it's just a lifesaver. And I, you know, honestly, there was some of that I used when I was homeschooling too. When you're trying to homeschool your kids, um, even if you're not trying, like I was working at the time too, but even if you're just focusing on that, which I, I say just, it's a lot, <laughs> but you feel like you're, you know, ping ponging around everybody like, Oh, let's do a little writing here. And then, do, okay, no, let's, let's block it out and, and grouping similar um, tasks that have to do with the same part of your brain yeah. <laughs> at the same time. Don't go from something that requires deep thinking to something that, that, you know, I don't know, that doesn't, that's just mindless and kind of group those together. It will help your brain just rest and function better so <clears throat> but also blocking that time for what's most important dogs. <laughs> we love dogs where's mine but blocking that time you know if, if spending time in the word is uh, you know, important to you which I, I hope it is and now you have no excuse not to have it block that time block time for exercise I have my shower blocked off like these are the times I have it blocked off so that I do I literally do I have everything blocked off and then nine o'clock or 9 30 that's when like I make my transition I have my coffee now it's time to work um, and it would, it would just help because I think you can, this is, this is my biggest fear for, um, uh, mainly, well, I guess for men and women, but I think about my sisters is, um, that when we don't have that routine and we're not in our purpose and one day blends into another, I just really fear for people feeling depressed and sad. And, um, we have total control over that. We can structure our time. We can focus our thoughts. We can be intentional in, in our relationships and what we're putting into our minds. We have control over that. It's just that we're so busy being fearful, we, we kind of lose track of it. So um, yeah, I hope that the, these coffee talks will help people to, I don't know, stay in that healthy mindset. That's great. That's great. <laughs> All right. So I think uh, you want to end. Shall we end? We have about another seven minutes, but you want to end yeah. with prayer? Yes, that sounds great. All right. Do you want me to go to first or do you want to go first? No, go ahead and go first. All right. Um, <laughs> here we go. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for who you are, that you are the one who sits on the throne in heaven and that all the elders bow down to you and you have mm. the entire world. You hold us in the palm of your hand. Jesus, we praise you and thank you for um, not just for your life on this earth and for your death, but also for your resurrection. I praise you that mm. you hold our, you have our names inscribed in the palms of your hand. Lord God, I praise you for the Holy Spirit that reminds us of all the things that we need to remember in this time. And that is that you sit on the throne. Father, we praise you that you were above and beyond and outside of our time. Father, we praise you for the plan that you have going forward. Lord, we know that um, illness and sickness is not of you. But Father, mm -hmm. uh, for this time that we are in, we know that you have control over all. Thank you, Father, for free will. Thank you that we um, we have we make choices of our own, God, that mm -hmm. choose how we will respond to this time that we live in. And Father, we just praise you. We lift up the healthcare workers today. We lift up mm -hmm. all of our public servants. We lift up our leaders. 
leadership in our companies and in our churches and in our nation and um, in our states. And we ask that you would give them wisdom, discernment, and guidance. Your word says that if we ask of it, you will give it. We ask that you give it, Father. I pray for our people to be obedient. I pray for a time of repentance in our nation to turn away from the things that we followed after and to turn back to you. Mm -hmm. Um, Jesus, we love you so very much. We want to honor you. We give you Mm -hmm. all in this. It's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh, Father, I just uh, am in agreement with everything that Lee said. And um, we just Mm -hmm. thank you for a time such as this, Lord, that um, we have this opportunity to, um, to, to rise to the occasion, Lord, to be, um, leaders in our homes, to be humble leaders in our homes, um, that we have an opportunity to to grow closer to you, to really go deeper in our faith, Lord, to set an example of quiet confidence in you, Lord, that your word provides for us the hope and the joy and um, just the inspiration that we need to get through a time such as this. We thank you for for trials because it's in the trials that we're refined and Lord, may we be, we may we welcome um, this sanctification process, Lord. And it's, it's, it's an opportunity for us to really uh, to rest in you and um, to show that to our families, families that have been scattered far and wide, Lord, all drawn near now. So don't let us waste this opportunity, father. Don't let us waste one minute I'm not giving you glory for all that you're doing, for all the ways that you're working. Turn our eyes towards you and with the hope of a future, the prom- your promises never fail. And like Lee said, we pray for those that are still out um, serving and on the front lines. We pray for those that are in financial straits right now by no fault of their own. And we pray that there would be common sense that people would um, operate safely so that um, this the duration of this could be shortened so that everybody can get back to work, Lord. I, I ask that your Holy Spirit be with those that are isolated, either by choice or, you know, uh, by sickness or whatever's happening right now. Oh, Father, I pray. I pray that you would bring them comfort. I pray that we would find innovative ways to stay connected with each other that even though we're not physically close to each other, that we would actually grow more close to each other, Lord, that we would take the time to tell each other how much we really care about them. And Father, I just thank you that um, you make all things new. Like Lee said, you know, um, (laughs) we have, we have seasons of, of, of things that end and seasons of, of regrowth and rebirth. And it's, quite fitting that it's springtime, um, things that are all blooming new. And so we just fix our eyes on that for the new days that are ahead of us. And um, we just thank you for giving us the strength and the courage to get through this time. And we, we pray for all those um, who are hearing this, rec- this either live or recording, Lord, that their homes would be filled with love and laughter and hope and joy and faith, that your Holy Spirit would be with them, Father, that you would calm their fears and that you would um, make them strong. And um, we just thank you for this opportunity for us to come together at the coffee table. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Robin, I'm so thankful for you. Oh, I'm so thankful for you. You are just my little angel. Don't make me cry. <laughs> I, I can't tell you how much I love you. And, uh, your friendship has meant over these last mm. seven months. So much to me beyond the beyond. We have walked through the valley of the shadow of the death together. <laughs> God ordained, yes, for sure. For such a time as this. And now yeah. so you and I have held hands through that valley. Mm-hmm. I feel like mm-hmm. I want to hold hands with you to lift others mm-hmm. up too. So I love you. Amen. Love you. Love you. And I love you. Thank you all for watching. Thanks, Katie and Julie. Love you girls. And uh, feel free to um, invite people to this page and share. We're going to be back on Wednesday, and we would love for you to come join us for coffee. (laughs) In the corner. (laughs) All right. What's our sign off? What's our sign off? Our sign off is peace. Love you. Peace. Peace. Love you. (laughs) All right. Talk to you later.